Question 1. The equation of the line shown below is y equals minus 2x minus 2, y equals minus 3 on 2x plus 3, y equals minus 2 thirds x plus 3, or y equals 3 on 2x plus 3. We have a few things to look for here and one of them is the rise and the run which creates the gradient or the number in front of the x. So here if we go by the uh, y-axis and the x-axis intercepts there we can tell that this line rises 3 for every 2 that it goes across and it leans to the right which makes the gradient positive in these questions. So we have a gradient of 3 over 2, and that number should be in front of the x. So we're so strongly suspecting that d is our correct answer here. We'll just check one other thing here. The y-intercept in the diagram, it goes through the y-axis, this line, at the point 3. And that's the, called the y-intercept, and that's the number at the end of the equation. So that's looking good for option d. y equals 3 over 2x plus 3 is the correct equation for this line. Question 2. A line perpendicular to another line with a gradient of minus 4 will have a gradient of minus 4, 4, 1 quarter or minus 1 quarter. Perpendicular lines have opposite reciprocal gradients. So the fraction version of one gradient, if you turn that upside down and turn the positive into a negative or a negative into a positive, you'd have the gradient for a line that's perpendicular to the first one. So if we are looking for a line that's perpendicular to a line that's got a gradient of minus four, we'll put it in fraction form and any number can be written as a fraction over one. Now to find the gradient of the line perpendicular to that, we will turn it upside down, and because the first line was a minus, we turned it into a positive. That's what we call the opposite reciprocal. Opposite meaning turning a minus into a plus, or a plus into a minus, and a reciprocal is a fancy name for turning something upside down. So the uh, gradient of the line that's perpendicular is one quarter. Question 3. The equation of a horizontal line passing through the point 0, 3 is... Is it x equals 3, y equals 3, y equals 3x, or x equals 3y? Horizontal lines are formed by a set of points that each have the same y value. So they certainly go up from the axis or down from the axis the same amount if they're sitting on a horizontal line. So therefore we can have a look at the y value of 3 and that's going to be describing the equation of this horizontal line. So the equation of horizontal lines is just the y value that's always the same in all the points. So in this case y equals 3 is the equation we're looking for. Question 4. The equation of a vertical line passing through the point minus 3, 5 is x equals minus 3, y equals minus 3, x equals 5, or y equals 5. Vertical lines are formed by a set of points that each have the same x value. So the x value of any point that's sitting on that line is the crucial bit. We have an x value of minus 3 in the point that we're given. And matter of fact, every point on that vertical line will have the same x value. So that x equaling minus 3 ends up being the equation of the vertical line. So the equation of this vertical line we're searching for is x equals minus 3.
Question 5. The equation of the line passing through the point minus 4, 1 with a gradient of 2 is y equals 2x minus 9 y equals 2x plus 9 y equals 2x minus 7 or y equals 2x plus 7 Okay, we're going to be doing this based on y equals mx plus b and we'll compile an equation from the fact that it goes through the point minus 4, 1 and has a gradient of 2. So we'll try and insert those uh, items into y equals mx plus b so we can form an equation out of this. So m is the gradient and so that means the, the question, when the question says gradient of 2, we'll put a 2 in there in front of the x to indicate that it's got a gradient of 2. Now we've got an x value and a y value given to us. We've got an x value of minus 4 and a y value of 1. So those numbers can go into the equation that we're building here. We have a 1 for the y and a minus 4 for the x and a plus b. Because the only thing that the question doesn't tell us really is the y-intercept. So we're working backwards, we're substituting in and working backwards to find the y-intercept. So we get 1 equals minus 8 when we multiply 2 times minus 4 plus b. Now to move a minus 8 from the right hand side to let b be on its own we're going to do the opposite of minus 8 and plus 8 to both sides. On the left hand side that leaves us with a 9 and on the right hand side the minus 8 and the plus 8 cancel each other out leaving us just with b. Now we'll swap that around to make sense. b equals 9. Now we already had a gradient of 2 and now that we've got a b equals 9 we can put the whole equation together. y equals 2x plus 9 is the equation of this line that passes through that point minus 4, 1 and has a gradient of 2. So we just built up that equation substituting in and working backwards at one stage to find the y-intercept. Question 6. 3x plus 4y plus 12 equals 0 can be rewritten as y equals 3 quarters x plus 4, y equals minus 3 quarters x plus 3, y equals 3 quarters x minus 4, or y equals minus 3 quarters x minus 3. Okay, we take 3x plus 4y plus 12. We want to rewrite it so that y is on its own. So we're going to be moving numbers away from um, the side where the y is. We'll minus 12 both sides to move him. Uh, on the left hand side we'll still have the 3x and the 4y but the plus, y, plus 12 and the minus 12 will cancel out on that left hand side so that it'll disappear from that left hand side. And on the right hand side we have 0 minus 12. It would be just minus 12. Now to keep going to eventually get y on its own, we're going to move the 3x term. That 3x term can be considered to be a positive 3x term or it's a bit like it's plussing on that left hand side. So to move it we're going to minus 3x both sides. It'll cancel out on the left hand side leaving us with 4y. On the right hand side it will go with the minus 12. They're not like terms so we can't really join them. So we'll just list minus 3x and minus 12 separately on that right hand side. So the last step we need to do to uh, get y on its own here is to get rid of that 4 that's multiplying by the y. We'll do that by doing the opposite and that's dividing by 4. We must do it to every term to be fair. On the left hand side the 4 that's multiplying and the 4 that's dividing will cancel each other out leaving us with y. We'll write the minus 3x divided by 4 as a bit of a fraction. Minus 3 quarters x is the fraction equivalent there. And on the last bit, minus 12 divided by 4 is minus 3. A minus divided by a plus makes a minus. So we get to discover that once we've turned it into a y equals mx plus b format, we get option d, y equals minus 3 quarters x minus 3. So rearranging that wasn't easy. We just stuck to the rules of moving things around by doing the opposites to both sides. 
eventually getting Y on its own. Question 7. Find the midpoint of a line segment joining the points 1, 6 and 5, 2. Here's our formula for midpoint. We have x of point 1 plus x of point 2 all over 2 for the first x value of the midpoint and for the second bit y1 plus y2 over 2. So let's label our points. It makes it easier for our brain if we've already labelled our points before we start substituting them into the right places in this midpoint formula. So we have point 1 there and we have an x of point 1 and a y of point 1. For the second point there, we'll label it in a similar way, x of point 2 and y of point 2. I like labelling the points early on because then we don't have to worry about which one's which. It saves us figuring out, oh, now which one was x and which one was y and which one was point 2. So we've already written it down next to it there. Okay, now we can just, in the next line down, we can start substituting it into the right spot. Uh, our formula asks for x1. Now x of point 1 is a 1. Our x of point 2 is a 5. For the next bit we need a y of point 1 which is a 6. And the last bit y of point 2 which is a 2. So we carefully set that out, nice and big writing, so we're not uh, getting too cramped on our page. And we've got that there. We'll simplify a bit there. We'll just add across the top a little bit on our two sections there. We'll get 5 plus 1 making 6 and 6 plus 2 making 8. And 6 divided by 2 goes 3 times, and 8 divided by 2 goes 4 times. So in the end, just following along and substituting carefully the values into the right spots of our midpoint formula, we get a midpoint of uh, the line segment joining the two points we're given in the question of 3, 4. That's our midpoint, 3, 4. Find the length of a line segment joining the points 1, 2 and 3, 4 correct to two decimal places. We have a formula, this is our distance formula, x of point 2 minus x of point 1 all squared plus y of point 2 minus y of point 1 all squared and the big square root over the top. Now we're going to label our points here. The 1 is the x of point 1 and the 2 is the y of point 1. The 3 there is the x of point 2 and the 4 is the y of point 2. Helps a lot once you label these points. So straight under our distance formula on the next line down we're just going to substitute in the right numbers into the right spots in the formula. So we've got the square root of, now we're looking for x2, x of point 2 is a 3 I think you can spot. So we'll put him in there. Uh, x of point 1 is a 1. Next section we need a y of point 2 which is a 4 and a y of point 1 which is a 2. So that's there. We're just going to simplify in the next bit down. We're going to do 3 minus 1 is 2 and in the second bracket there we have 4 minus 2 is also 2. Alright, so we'll keep simplifying here. 2 squared is 4 and the other 2 squared will be very similar if not identical. So we have a final answer of root 8, which we can then put into our calculator in order to get it to two decimal places. Square root of 8 ends up being 2.83 units correct to two decimal places. So that's a calculator job to go from square root of 8 to 2.83 units for the line, the length of the line segment joining the two points in the question. Question 9. Find the exact distance between the points minus 2, 7 and 1, 1. Here's our distance formula. We'll label our points. That's x of point 1, y of point 1, x of point 2, y of point 2, 
and we're ready to go. Next line down we'll substitute all our values into the right spots in the formula and see where we are. Okay, now we're looking for the x of 0.2 which you can see as being the first one. x of 0.1 is a minus 2 so we'll have to be a little careful there, we have a minus and a minus together. y of 0.2 was our 1, our second one there, and y of 0.1 is a 7. Okay, now two minuses together without any numbers in between, that turns into a plus in that first bracket. Okay, let's keep simplifying. In that first bracket, we now have a 1 plus a 2 once the two minuses merged, so we get a 3 for that section. In the second bracket, we have a 1 minus 7. That's taking away more than we've got, so we end up with a minus number there of minus 6. But when we square a minus number, it turns into a plus. Alright, so let's go down and say 3 squared is 9 and minus 6 times itself or minus 6 squared minus times a minus makes a plus so we end up with 36 for that bit. So if we add 9 and 36 we get an exact distance of 45 units and the formula had a, a square root around it the whole time so we have an exact distance of square root of 45. Now if you've done these thirds and simplified these um, if you've seen this topic before, you'll know that you can simplify square root of 45 into something smaller, a bit like simplifying a fraction, I suppose. So we can express square root of 45 as two separate square roots. Now if we can have one of those separate square roots, one of those factors of 45 being able to be square rooted, that will simplify our final answer. So if we can express 45 as root 45 as root 9 times root 5, which we're allowed to do, we're allowed to split it up like that, I can think you can see that square root of 9 can come down to be a normal number. Square root of 9 is 3. So root 45 in a simpler way is expressed as 3 root 5 units. It's a bit funny, but um, that's the simplest version we can get for the exact distance between the points. When they say exact, exact in the question, they want you to leave it as a square root, not type it into your calculator and get some decimal version. Okay, so the final answer there, if it's simplified, is 3 root 5. If you've got a final answer of square root of 45, you've done really well. Um, just that extra bonus there might be an extra half mark or a mark if the teacher's being particularly generous. So that's that one, the exact distance. Question 10. Find the y-intercept of 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0. Okay, one way of doing this, and there are several ways, <laughs> is to rearrange 2x minus 3y plus 1 equals 0 to be in y equals mx plus b form. And then we can read off what that number is at the end once we've put it into the right format, and that'll be our y-intercept. So b, if we once we get it into that format with y on its own and everything else on the right-hand side, the last number there without any x's next to it, that'll be our y-intercept. So let's start rearranging here. It's good for our algebra skills anyway. Okay, to rearrange this, we want y on its own. Now we want the y to be positive. So I'm going to be starting my first step here of moving the minus 3y term over to the other side. And by doing that, it turns that y term into a positive, which is what I'll need in the end anyway. Okay, so to move, to move a minus 3y, I'm going to plus 3y both sides. On the left-hand side, it'll cancel out, leaving us with 2x and the plus 1 just on the left-hand side. And then on the right hand side we've got 0 plus 3y becoming 3y. So the last step to uh, getting y on its own would be to move that 3 that's multiplying. We'll do the opposite, which is, I uh, will swap sides first. I forgot about that. <laughs> so just to make it convenient, we've got to swap sides at some stage because we want y on its left, don't we? So anyway, we get 3y equals 2x plus 1 if we just swap those around for convenience. And we need to move that 3, as I said. So we'll divide by 3. For, we have to do it to every term. So be careful with that one. The left-hand side, the 3 and the divided by 3 will cancel each other out, leaving us with y. 
We can express 2x being divided by 3 in a bit of a fraction, 2 thirds x. And on the last bit we have 1 divided by 3 which we can express as a fraction of 1 third. The bottom of the fraction divides into the top. So I think you can see now that we're in y equals mx plus b form, our y-intercept is just that end bit, the positive one-third. So our y-intercept is one-third. So that rearranging of the formula is one way to do this. You can also substitute in an x value of zero and uh, solve whatever results. So sometimes that becomes a bit faster, that method, but that's for another day. I'll show you that in another video. So this time we rearranged into y equals mx plus b form and then we're able to read off the y-intercept from that.